Hi, everybody. This is a wee bit of alchemy. I'm Rick Barrett. Welcome. Tonight, I'd like to get into the idea of vitality, it's something that's come up a lot with people. You know, they were, you know, even like very dynamic, active people come to me and they say, hey, I my get up and go, got up and went. I need more vitality. And you know the the vitality they're talking about there is not just merely existing, you know, living and and somehow pulsing. It's it's there's a um, quality of vigor, of zest, of uh, enthusiasm, a, a desire to 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 do stuff, to participate in the world. And uh, I think all of us at some point or other noticed like, oh, today I have less vitality. And today may be extending over months or even longer. So the, you know, the ability to cultivate vitality, the ability to, to get that back is, uh, I think, uh, it's important. It's not something you just want to, you don't want to just sit around and wait for it to happen to you. It's something you want to be an active participant in. So in the idea of vitality, you know, at its core, it's, it's you know, vital means having to do with life. And so the, you know, vitality would be that which promotes life and living and the qualities that uh, the activities associated with with life and living that you that you consider to be important, and I think a lot of that is goes into getting that zest is doing those things that you like to do. If you you know, I think a lot of the people that ask me this question are doing spending a huge amount of energy doing things that maybe they don't like so much. You know, they're still they're working at, at a job where the stresses outweigh the, the joys. And, and so the, a lot of the idea of vitality comes with finding something that you care about, that you are willing to invest your attention, intention, to embrace it with your whole being, which I guess kind of leads us to the next thing, which I consider to be essential to feeling that vitality, and that is a quality of meeting. You know, you know I, it's something I, I bring up all the time. And one of the key elements of meeting is that you encounter with your whole being. So that is, you are you're into it. You are involved, you're participating in the moment and to the fullness of your of your being, whatever that means to you at in the moment. And you know, we have done a lot of work where we are reestablishing that wholeness as a coherent being. You know, one of the core things that you, of what I've been organizing a lot of research around is the idea of of establishing energetic coherence by pointing and reaching with your index fingers, feeling them, which then creates a, a wholeness within the system, within the system of your body mind and allows you to come into the present with your body mind. So there's a, a, a bit of whole of uh, integration there, body, mind, spirit integration that occurs every time you do that. And the, the, the key with the, with the pointing is that it is directed toward me. You know, I am becoming whole as a being, as an entity. Then we get, we expand beyond that. And what is my relation to the environment, to the world around me? Then we get into central equilibrium as a way of, of opening to the big chi, of creating a, an energy exchange with something much bigger. You know, the big chi, the chi of the earth and sky. 
which then we feel plugged into something, a system which is much greater than just that which is enclosed by my skin. And then the third aspect of the three pillars is to unkink the hose so that you are able to allow that energy to move freely throughout the system and you're able to express it. So the, at the core of that is meeting. Core of that is, that is you are encountering with your whole being in a way that you are participating in the moment. So life is not happening to you. You are engaged. You are involved. You are a, in a conversation or a dance with, with life, with your, with your environment, with you know, your environment, both external and internal. So both environments are, are require their own perception. Their interoception is, is looking inward and it's, it's perceiving what's going on inside. And exteroception is, is you know, aligning with, with what's happening outside. And what, we, what is hypothesized by, what's that called? Um, uh, da, 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 ge, oh, come on. The uh, gen genetics. Uh, epigenetics. Epigenetics. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Maria. The uh, epigenetics is, you know, the, the idea that we can change our, our genetics, our genetic expression in present time. So it's not something that evolution that happens over a sustained period of thousands of years or whatever. It's something that where you can just by your relationship to your internal and external environments, you can change your genetic expression now. And, and that will enable you to encourage greater health and uh, well being and possibly longevity. So the, uh, your, um, relationship to your environment has a direct effect on your vitality. So the, um, one, one person who asked this recently, you know, was, was talking and saying like, yeah, I was running, I was walking along the beach and, and looking at the ocean as this just got caught up in like the immense power that is in that ocean. It's like, yeah, I don't feel that way. I don't feel I have that power. And, um, uh, I said, yeah, well, that, that, you know, join the club. It's, it's, <laughs> that's a lot, that's a lot going on there in, in, in the ocean. But one thing that, you know, a, a number of physicists have, have talked about is that every cubic centimeter of empty space has more energy than all the oceans. And I think Richard Feynman, uh, said it that one cubic the energy in one cubic centimeter could boil all the oceans of the world and that empty space is we're approaching nothingness in that in that empty space there is potentiality there but it is the it is insubstantial like very insubstantial and what, this is something that inspired me, you know, decades ago when I was started really formulating a lot of this stuff, is that idea of like, how can we tap into that emptiness, that nothingness, in order to be able to get some of that juju? And I think a lot of what we've been talking about for the past year or so is moving in that direction where we're able to move into a state of stillness where we are not reaching but approaching that emptiness, that, that nothingness, so that we can then tap into the big yin and allow that to fill up and replenish 
our, um, our personal energy. Because we get caught up in the doing, churning away, and that's energy out. And which is great and, and definitely part of the part of the game. But if we don't balance it out by replenishing the chi, filling up, then we're going to be running at a deficit and we're going to start depleting our resources. But if we can find a way to plug into that, the big chi, but also plug into the stillness even in motion, because we talk about Taiji Tran is finding the stillness in motion, finding the motion in stillness. So if you are doing a, a sitting meditation where you're being very still, you are noticing and attuning to the incredible activity that is occurring in that stillness. And when you're doing a Tai Chi form, say, you are feeling into, you're in motion, but you're feeling into the stillness in that motion. And so it's that, that dynamic interplay that keeps it going. So vitality has this quality of doing involved, or at least the potentiality of doing. You're capable of going out and, and you know, hiking that trail or running that that path or biking or or gardening or whatever it is you do so you have that that capacity to do and but it's not a slog it's something where you're feeling yeah yeah you're 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 riding the wave rather than getting crushed by it so the uh what i want to play with tonight is uh, kind of building on what we did last week which was we were playing with central equilibrium as a way you know finding that in the various stances and also in the transition points and emphasizing that central equilibrium is not a static posture it's not just something that you you get into whenever your your weight is 50 50 and and you're at rest but it's something that is found in every movement and it is in that central equilibrium, you avail yourself of power, vitality, that is not generated by the oxidation of, of food and air and drink, you know, that you consume by your body. It's not, it's not just based on, on oxidation. In, in your body, it's actually something that is more insubstantial, and it is what is lifting and, and, and carrying you along. So um, we're going to play around a little bit with that. But actually, first, any questions or thoughts on this before we, uh, before we proceed? Anybody have th thoughts on vitality? or questions about it or anything. Okay, um, all cool, ready to uh, ready to work? Let's do it, all right. Okay. <laughs> So we're going to build on that thing we did last week with the central equilibrium, and we're going to expand from that because we got a chance to play with that and feel just by exploring central equilibrium and different postures, slowing down and bringing awareness to that, we we're able to generate a tremendous energy flow. Ah, one more thing I want to talk about, and that is the importance of doing this, the importance of physically doing it because you need to have a vessel, your body, 
that is capable of handling the increase of energy that you're going to experience whenever you play with this stuff. Otherwise, you're just going to shut down and you're just not going to not going to practice or you're going to do something to to reduce the energy flow because it's it becomes uncomfortable if you do not have a sufficient uh, body mind that can tolerate that. So a lot of why I was talking about this stuff is is to give you kind of a theoretical framework to to make it a little more interesting than yeah Rick says to do this so I do it it's a uh, you can get more out of it if you understand what we're talking about here so uh, let's uh, let's actually step out and begin feet hip width feel the balls of the feet. Feel the weight throughout your whole foot. Knees are unlocked. Reach for the crown of your head. Tuck in the chin and open the jade pillow gate. So when you open the jade pillow gate, you reach for the crown, you the knee one, and you open the jade pillow gate, you activate the Jing Jing Shen which is the spirit of vitality. So raise your chin a little bit and just feel into that. And tuck it in. And stretch your neck a little bit and open up that gap between the skull and the neck, that suboccipital area. And just notice the effect that has on your body. So we're going to be playing with that a little bit as we do these, these exercises. Feel your feet again. Feel the balls of your feet. Feel your toes. Feel the, feel the floor with your toes. Relax your lower back and allow your coccyx to drop. And feel the elongation of the spine as you reach up with the crown of the head and reach down with your Wei Lu. Wei Lu is where you at the, the at the ganglion impar. That's where the sympathetic nervous system, the, the branches of the sympathetic nervous system, come together in your coccyx into one point. It's um, sometimes called the walking brain. It is uh, kind of uh, an epicenter in the nervous system where it uh, controls a lot of your, your movement and also your posture, your proprioception. So having your, you know, activating your Wei Lu allows you to plug in a little bit more to the big chi. 
unkink the hose. And reach with your index fingers, feel your fingers, feel the chi in your hands. Shoulders are relaxed. Reach with your elbows. And feel your body mind filling with chi. Release your claw, get some claw spiral down, boom, boom. Feel that, just claws nice and relaxed, open. Arms are very, are relaxed, but they have a shape. They're not collapsed. So you want the elbows slightly rounded. The arms are, are very released. You're feeling the arms unwinding. It's like the muscles and the sinews are, as you relax the tension that you hold there is letting go. And sometimes going back, tension that's been there for decades. And feel into your hands and notice the response there. Feel the, the activity that's occurring in, in the hands, all that movement and stillness. One of the things about the jade pillow gate is it's not something where you just set it and forget it. This is something quite similar to the idea of, of pointing and reaching with your index fingers. You do it again and again and again and again. And each time you get a little shot of that Jing Shen. So it's as if you're meeting the insubstantial by changing your relationship of your head to your neck. So you just you open that jade pillow gate a little more and just feel when you do that, you get this burst of energy through your body mind. Like you can feel it, feel it filling up. Now feel the ball of your left foot. Set the left knee. And spiral down to the right, pivoting on the left, the right heel. And as you do that, Reestablish, reach again with the crown of your head. Reach down with your Wei Lu and feel that feel the effect that that has. Feel the, the, the vitality that gets released, that, that is activated just with that simple action. Now feel the ball of the right foot. Push your right knee in, reach with your elbows, spiral down to the right as you sink into the right claw. Keeping your central equilibrium. Opening the jade pillow gate. Pick up the left heel. Sink a little more into that right leg. You're really trusting that right leg. The 
step forward with the left foot, keeping your weight, your substantiality in your back leg, in your right leg, and activate the jade pillow gate again. Reach with the elbows again, with your index fingers again. Feel the balls of your feet. You'll evolve your left foot. Push your left knee forward and set that. Find the sweet spot. Play around with it and see, ah, oh, where's, where's, where's that ideal place? Spiral down to the right, releasing the quad, reaching with the elbows. Reach again with the, with the crown of your head. Turn the waist, body is centered. Let your right elbow point, and reach out with your right hand, reach down with your left. Reach with the crown of your head. Align those motions with that reaching of the crown of the head. And feel the connection throughout your whole body mind. This is how we get Jin. We are meeting the environment, both internal environment and external environment. We are creating a highly coherent environment. You feel the ball of the right foot, set the right knee, spiral down to the right, reach with the elbows, sink into that right claw, pick up your left heel, feel the reach with the crown, reach with the elbows, Feel the power in this posture. And step back with your left foot without shifting weight. Feel the, allow your, your left foot to settle in. Piv turn so that the left foot is pivoting out at a 45. Reach the elbows, left hand comes up, center line. And turn back to center, reach out with the left hand. About 90% of your substantiality is in your left leg now. Feel the connection from your fingers all the way through the floor. Feel the earth chi animating your arm, your hand, your fingers, extending throughout your whole body. <coughs> Feel the ball of the left foot, set the left knee, reach the crown of the head, reach the elbows, spiral down to the left, Right hand comes up the center line, going down with the left. Up the left heel, the right heel. Step back with the right foot. Turn that on to 45. Right ball, set the right knee, sprawl down to the right. And turn back to center and reach out with the right hand. Reach down with the left. Come on the toe of your left foot. 
Find your center equilibrium. Feel your elbows. Reach of the crown. To the ball of the right foot, set the right knee. Spiral down to the right, reach of the elbows. Reach of the crown. Be open that jade pillow gate. Step forward with the right foot. Right ball, set the right knee, spiral down to the left. So you're stepping forward the left foot, um, spiral down to the left, left hand comes up. And this time you're weighted in the left leg. Your left leg is substantial. Left ball, set the left knee, spiral down to the left. Step forward with your right foot so the feet are now parallel. Bring your hands down. So as we do this, we can see that any motion can create jin, provided we meet, provided we align our internal and external environments in such a way as to create a coherence. We create a resonance with something much greater, which then amplifies our own field, our own personal energy becomes heightened. Feel the balls of both feet, set both knees, and turn your, reach out with your heels. So you're you're a little bit pigeon toed right now, and then turn the feet so that they're now pointing straight ahead. So now we have a horse stance, we have a ma bo. Feel the balls, set the knees, and sink. You want to feel your weight over the balls of the feet. Again, reach with the crown of your head. Open the jade pillow gate. Feel the jingshan. Reach to the elbows. Point with your index fingers. And sink a little more. Relax your lower back. Allow your pelvic bowl to align. Reach again with your, your, the crown of your head. And sink a little more. Just feel into that. Reach a little more with your elbows. Reach more with the crown of your head. Open the jade pillow gate. Feel the balls of your feet. Relax your lower back. Feel the ball of the right foot, set the right knee, spiral down to the left, loading up the right quad, keeping your central equilibrium, reaching with the elbows, 
region of the fingers, crown, Feel the stability of this posture. And step in. Feel the movement in stillness. Feel the microcirculation occurring in your blood vessels. As capillaries are opening up, reaching into parts of your body which are ordinarily underserved by your circulation. through the crown of your head, open the jade pillow gate. Feel the balls of your feet, feel your elbows, feel your fingers. Take a deep breath, your hands up. And as you exhale, disappear the chi. Dissolve, empty out. There's a point where even the chi is too substantial. Going into that emptiness. Allow the energies of your environment, with the big chi, to move through unrestricted, allowing the energy to fix whatever needs to be fixed, to energize and to revitalize. Give your body mind permission to receive the energy that's passing through you and to allow it to do its work. Become a grateful recipient of this gift. You know, all those thirsty cells receiving this bounty. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, take a seat. How'd we do, kids? Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Lord have mercy. Hmm. He turned up his beat. Jeez. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Sharon. Um. I never caught before this evening about uh, repeatedly like resetting the um, the occiput and uh, the lift. Um, so that that was that was new to me to keep resetting it. What I was so often trying to do was holding it, and it was creating tension. Right. You know. Right. So that, that, that was a big piece for me. Thank you. Beautiful, beautiful. And that gets back to the meeting thing. So every time we do that, there's a meeting that occurs. And it happens in present time. And it creates this, you're plugging into the now. And all the, the gifts that that has to, to offer. Valerie. Um, first, I have to say it out loud. Ganglion Empire sounds like something out of Star Wars. <laughs> it does, doesn't it? <laughs> it, it? It grabs me every single time. Um, <laughs> yeah, set course for the Ganglion Empire. <laughs> Warp speed. <laughs> I have a question. It, it's something that every time you say it, I go, huh, when you say load up the qua, um, and I'm thinking I want my qua to be sung, that does not seem to go together. Okay. Explain, please. I shall demonstrate. A kettlebell. I push away, right? And as I come down, I release. But I'm loading that. So I'm holding that. It's not pushing away. It is, it's an entirely different vector. It's a receiving of that, of that force. So if I'm pushing up against it, I'm activating and those are different, uh, that's, a, that's a different motion for me. So when I'm loading up my claw, when I'm not, when I'm, let's say if I'm, pushing away, uh, I'm holding down, I'm pressing down against the earth and pushing away from it, that's that's a, a yang impulse, it's a, an extension. If I want a, uh, a yin impulse, I'm loading that, so it's carrying me rather than pushing. So my qua is now carrying me, so that I can kind of just be able to hang in there and, and be able to just allow that to settle into the into the qua, which is a huge, huge shift. It's a it's a it's a big shift in your in your mental state because a lot of times, you know, let's say we were doing the Ma Bo stance there, and people get really tired and, and shaky when they when they do a posture like that, uh, because they're pushing away from the earth and their muscles get tired. 
And, but if you are sung, you can hold that for quite a long time. Mm. And just, uh, as you, once you learn how to release and load rather than push. Does that make sense? You have to release first in order to let it load up, right? You have to release to let it load up, right? Mm -hmm. I guess I, I guess what I'm struggling with is actually, I mean, I, I know in practice what you're saying, but the idea, the loading, um, can you feed, is there another word that I could grab that will, that I would like better. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, it's, maybe it's loading the leg by releasing the claw. Loading the leg by releasing the claw. You're not really loading the claw. Um, not quite. Kind of. Richard, you had something? Uh, I, I think of it as absorbing the substantiality into the relaxed qua. Okay, that sounds an awful lot like loading. I'm trying to think of another way to say it. <laughs> but I can understand what he what he just said versus saying loading. So now I get it. Okay. okay. That, thank you, Richard. <laughs> Good, Nick. You had you had a you had a. An yeah, offering. I was. I was going to say another word that occurs to me is cushioning. You let the joint cushion the, the weight of your or the substance, you know. Uh, but what I was going to suggest is to get a feeling for it. One of the things that I've done is um, to imagine you're catching a piece of plate glass as it falls. Mm -hmm. And you don't want it to break, right? So you you absorb that impact, but you support the weight. And you can get a sense of that by standing about 18 inches out from the wall, letting yourself fall towards the wall and catching softly, as softly and as quietly and as smoothly as you can. You begin to get that into the muscle memory that way a little bit. At least that works for me anyway. No, that's perfect. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah, it's like catching a mirror. You know, it's falling down. It's like, yeah. Oh, yeah. oh, you you take it up. But there is a loading that occurs there, just like you know, you load your luggage into the trunk. You know, it sits there. It's it's just holding the luggage. It doesn't, you know, it's not pushing the luggage up. It's just it's there. But uh, yeah, capture. Okay. So uh, uh, anybody else? Scott. So I think this is probably just something I just need to keep practicing. But while we were doing that, I kept getting this, you know, terrible, like, probably you could say a, um, you know, King Co is on my top of my shoulders, neck top of my shoulders. Um, and it would come and go, definitely um, really reaching with the, you know, with the crown and tilting would, would alleviate it most of the time, but mm -hmm. it was definitely an ongoing process the whole time is what we keep coming <laughs> back. And I think it's maybe just, I don't know. Do you have any thoughts? Yeah, the, the, the idea um, as a remedy for that, uh, you know, there's a lot of things you can do. You can get a massage, you, you know, can do things like that. But also in terms of like unwinding, you know, I said, you know, be able to just hang with your, your arms down. But you can also do that with, you know, with a weight too. You can just sort of hang. And this is very sung. I'm not pulling on my, on the weight. I'm just allowing it to pull down. And it is lengthening the tissues as I, as I do that. I just relax my arm and just let that happen. And so what that's going to do, it's going, you're going to feel the connection all the way, all the way up. As you as you do that, so it's just a way of of getting, uh, you know, allowing the muscles to get more soon. Mm. All right. Okay. <laughs> Anybody else? Mm. 
Valerie. Um, it was a great exercise. It was just, it was uh, before we even did any kind of movement with the feet, just standing there and just, you know, being whole and connecting all the parts, you know, from the feet up to the crown. Um, this is something um, that I've always done is doing that standing to keep myself focused in, in the here and now. I will do that kind of mantra. I think feet, I think knees, I think Weilu, I think shoulders, elbows, uh, I think crown. And then I start it again, you know? So that keeps me here and now. And um, so it was something I was very familiar with. And uh, just, you know, I'm surprised Scott could still be in the room because <laughs> I was so big. <laughs> um, so I, I just, I really appreciated it. It felt really, really good. Great. Terrific. Uh, how about everybody else? How'd that feel? Is that good? Is that good? Yeah. Richard. Yes. Well, that, this was... Uh... This was about the fullest I've ever been tonight. This was, there was something, there was some, uh, some incremental change for me tonight. Uh, I was really, really full. Uh, and Beautiful. Significantly. Yeah. Great, great. Thank you. You're welcome. You know, what Sharon was saying there about, you know, doing the crown, you know, again and again, reaching with the knee one, but not just that, reaching with the elbows, reaching with the fingers, you know, just each time you do that, it enhances your vitality. It increases your tolerance for fullness, for energy flow. And you also realize you can waste it. You don't, you don't have to store it you don't have to hoard it you know the energy is super abundant it is it is everywhere and and you can plug in anytime you want which is kind of cool so you don't you're not like greedily holding on to these little snippets of energy that that you can you can yeah. muster up at a given time it's like no no i can get as much as i can tolerate so the game becomes not how do I get the energy, but how much can I, how much flow can I tolerate? And you look at, you know, I look at it as flow too. I look at it not as, you know, how, how much can I hang on to? It's like, no, no, I'm, I'm a fire hose, you know, and the stuff is moving through and just get out of the way because it's, it's coming through. And, uh, you know, that tolerance for that, you need a bigger hose. You need a bigger diameter hose to allow the, uh, allow the energy to, to move like that. And this is why we, we kind of push it to, to the extent we did tonight. Richard. Uh, it's just occurring to me, a, a, just a strange thought that, um, you know, I've, I've spent years trying to learn to stand quietly without moving. And don't stand still. That's not the right thing to do. It may appear as though you're not moving, but you can't be standing still. Right. There's, there's, there's movement happening all the time. And it's a constant adjustment. Even if it's happening, even if it's not visible to anybody else, it, there's, you know, you're, you're constantly adjusting. You're constantly meeting the moment because it things are changing, you know, things are changing every second. So you gotta, you gotta have your, your game ready to, uh, to meet those changes. And, and by engaging it, you're constantly resetting back into the present moment, back into now and back into coherence, back into wholeness. Mm -hmm. Rinse, repeat. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Yes. Oh. Good. Definitely. Anybody else? Yeah. Stan. Yeah. Yes. Uh, 
Okay. Uh, it looks like it's on. No, just want to say it see, uh, seems to be just following your direction each time, uh, extending the head, uh, folding it a little bit, and the same with the legs. Each time you do that, it uh, just seems to feel better. Right. I think that's about the only way to put it. It feels better, like I'm, I'm able to uh, absorb it better or whatever, to go into it. And I notice if I'm a little bit off, just shift it a little bit and it becomes okay. And it's uh, each time, each time. I think we need that a couple of times uh, to try this, to each time settle in and change position, settle in the same way, each time. Thank you. Beautiful, beautiful, thank you. So it's like, it's more like a conversation that you're having yes. with your environments, both internal and external. There's yes. constantly this give and take, there's these adjustments that are occurring. You're not looking for perfection, you're looking for what's good, what's the best I can do right now? What's the best I can do in this moment? And, and, and build on that and you'll you your body mind will have a memory of that moment and doesn't mean you're going to be able to find it the next time it means that you'll have to find the new moment the new relationship the yes. moment that is happening now and there is the uh the fun of it and uh you know the benefit of it great okay Let's uh, wrap this up. Love you all. Thank you. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you, Maria. <laughs> Thank you, Maria. Oh, yes. yes.